Every day, we look in the mirror without even thinking about the long journey the materials took to make it into our homes. Imagine that your reflection in the mirror is the result of a complex process that began in the dark mines of Mexico all the way back in the 16th century. How does an ordinary gray mineral transform into the shiny surface we see every day? I decided to find out for myself and visited both the mines and the factory. Now, let me tell you about this fascinating journey. My adventure began at one of the largest silver mines in the world, the Proaño mine in Mexico. This mine produces more silver than any other in the world, accounting for about 20% of the global supply. Just imagine, since excavation began in 1566, over 30,000 tons of silver have been extracted here. As I descended 1,300 feet underground, I realized how harsh the working conditions are. Damp tunnels and intense heat, it's like being inside a giant sauna, but instead of relaxing, you're doing grueling work. The miners here aren't just extracting silver. They battle nature and their own strength every day. Every shift is a fight against heat, exhaustion, and darkness. This was a real eye-opener for me. We often don't think about how everyday objects are made, but behind the mirror, I look into each day, are hundreds of people who descend deep into the earth to mine the mineral that eventually becomes part of our homes. Over the course of nine miles, at various depths, silver deposits can be found. To continuously extract it, workers dig new tunnels every month, about two miles a month. It sounds unbelievable, but they accomplish this with a massive machine equipped with a rotating cutting head. This machine literally chews its way through the rock. I even had the chance to try operating it for a bit, and it was incredible. Feeling the metal tear into the stone is like experiencing the raw power of nature in your own hands. After the tunnels are dug, the workers use explosives to break apart the rock. It's a highly precise process, and each hole where the explosives are placed is carefully measured using special lasers. It's like a scene straight out of a mining movie. But when you're down there, deep inside the mine, you really grasp just how dangerous it is and how crucial it is to follow every instruction to the letter. Every day, the mine produces 7,700 tons of ore, and every single ton has to be transported to the surface. The ore is loaded into trains that carry it to a central collection point, where it's then brought up to the surface. When I saw these trains, I realized that the mine is like an underground city, with its own logistics system. Once on the surface, the ore is sent to a crushing plant, where massive drums filled with steel balls grind it down into a fine sand. It's like a giant coffee grinder at work, except instead of coffee beans, it's crushing rocks. Next, a reagent is added to the crushed ore, which makes the silver minerals hydrophobic. This helps concentrate the silver by a factor of 30, and this mixture is then sent to the Met-Mex plant, the largest in Latin America. I was stunned by the scale of this facility. Over 5 million pounds of silver are produced here each year. Just imagine, that's nearly a ton of silver every single day. At the plant, the smelting process begins. The silver ore is heated to 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And like boiling water on a massive scale, impurities start to evaporate. Since silver doesn't react with oxygen, it can be separated to nearly 99% purity. The molten metal is then poured into molds to create plates, which are submerged in a silver nitrate solution. When electricity is applied to this solution, it's like magic. Silver deposits on one plate, while gold stays on the other. Once the silver is purified, it is sent to a mirror manufacturing plant. But before silver becomes the reflective coating, let's talk about the glass. It all starts with quartz sand, which must be pure and free of any impurities. To make the glass stronger, limestone and sodium carbonate are added to the sand, which also helps lower the melting temperature. At the plant, I watched as the mixture was heated to 3,100 degrees Fahrenheit. Imagine that. That's nearly three times hotter than your oven at its highest setting. 15 tons of glass are turned into a thick liquid, which is then molded into panels. 
The most fascinating part is how the glass is cooled. It's slowly passed through a cooling bath, with the temperature gradually dropping from 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit. This process takes several hours and is necessary to relieve internal stress and prevent cracking. I was told that if the glass were cooled too quickly, it could actually explode due to the stress. Afterward, the glass is cut and inspected. I watched as a special tungsten carbide roller was used to cut the glass, and then inspectors examined each sheet under bright lights. They search for even the tiniest defects, and if any are found, the glass is sent for recycling. This ensures that every mirror turns out flawless. Once the glass is ready, it's sent to the mirror factory, where the most exciting stage begins, turning the glass into a mirror. First, solid silver is dissolved in nitric acid to create silver nitrate. Then the glass is cleaned with a cerium oxide powder, which gives it a shiny finish. I was amazed to learn that it only takes one minute to clean each panel. After that, the glass is rinsed with hot demineralized water to remove all contaminants. A layer of liquid tin is then applied to the glass, as silver cannot bond directly to it. When the liquid silver is poured over the tin, it solidifies due to a chemical reaction. I was told that only 0.025 ounces of silver is used per square yard of mirror, but that's enough to make it reflective. The next step is applying two layers of paint to protect the silver coating from damage and corrosion. I visited the chamber where the paint is baked at about 210 degrees Fahrenheit. It was incredibly hot in there, and the process runs continuously to ensure the necessary quality. Once the paint dries, the mirror is almost complete. Finally, the mirrored panels are cut to the required sizes, and each one goes through a final polishing process. As I stood near the machine that cuts and polishes the mirrors, I was amazed by the precision and care involved. There's no room for mistakes. Every mirror has to be perfect. When I saw the finished mirror, all packed up and ready to be shipped, I realized that behind this everyday object we see all the time lies an incredible story. A story of hard work, risk, technology, and the pursuit of perfection. Now, when I look into a mirror, I don't just see my reflection. I see the entire journey that mirror took to end up in my home. Imagine if every glass bottle you throw away could become the key to saving the planet and even earn you some extra cash. Did you know that over 130 million tons of glass are recycled worldwide each year? I recently visited one of the largest recycling plants to uncover the fascinating secrets of how ordinary glass takes an incredible journey from the trash bin to new possibilities, transforming our lives along the way. So, how does a glass item get a new life? The recycling process for bottles begins with collecting used glass. In many cities and countries, a system of separate waste collection is in place, which greatly helps with efficient recycling. Special containers for glass collection are set up in various locations, separated from those for plastic, paper, and organic waste. This prevents glass from mixing with other materials, making the recycling process smoother. In some countries or companies, glass collection points have been established, where people can return used bottles and receive a reward in exchange. This encourages the public to participate in gathering and returning glass bottles for recycling. In many former Soviet Union countries, the collection of glass is often carried out by vulnerable and marginalized groups. However, in European Union countries, it is a routine practice for everyone to return used containers, often receiving something like a discount on their grocery bill in return. Once collected, the glass is sent to recycling plants, where the main processing begins. Once the glass bottles are collected from containers or drop-off points, they are transported to specialized sorting centers for further processing. Waste collection trucks periodically pick up the glass from these containers and deliver it either to sorting centers or directly to recycling plants. This is typically done on a large scale to make transportation more efficient. 
At the plants or sorting stations, the trucks unload the glass bottles into large containers, where they begin the preparation process for sorting and recycling. Once the bottles arrive at the facility, the next step begins, sorting the glass by type and color. This step is crucial to optimizing the recycling process. Sorting glass by color is extremely important because different glass colors are used for different products and mixing them can reduce the quality of new items. The bottles are sorted automatically using special optical scanners that detect the glass color and sort it into clear, green and brown categories. This is crucial since each type of glass requires separate recycling processes. These sorting machines are equipped with sensors that identify the color of the glass using light sensors. Whole bottles or glass fragments move along a conveyor belt where machines illuminate them with a lamp or laser. The light reflected from the glass is analyzed by the sensors. The system identifies the glass color based on the signal received and sends this information to a controller. After identifying the color, each glass piece is directed to the appropriate section, either through a stream of air or mechanically removed from the conveyor. The glass is then separated into different streams which significantly simplifies the next steps of melting and reuse in new products. Once sorted by color, the glass passes through magnets and airstreams to remove metal elements like bottle caps, as well as other impurities such as paper labels or plastic residues. Powerful magnets are placed along the conveyor belt to capture all metallic impurities, including steel caps, while electromagnetic separators are used to remove aluminum caps and foil pieces. Pneumatic systems are used to blow away plastic and label remnants from the conveyor, using strong air currents to clear away any materials that are not needed for further recycling. Of course, the glass also undergoes a wet cleaning process in special washing systems, as many of these bottles will be reused to make containers for food products. Just think about it. We discard bottles without a second thought, not realizing how much effort goes into recycling them. Compared to other materials, glass does not wear out or degrade with use, making it an incredibly sustainable material for continuous recycling. After the sorting process, the glass is crushed into what's called cullet, which serves as the raw material for making new glass products. Specialized machines are used to break down glass bottles into small pieces, making further processing easier. These crushers come in various types, but most work using a mill with two parts, one stationary and one movable, where the glass is ground down as the two parts rub against each other. Crushers can include jaw, cone, roll, hammer, and gyratory types. The glass is fed into the crushing machine via a hopper or conveyor belt, and inside, mechanical elements reduce it to the desired size. Some crushers go through multiple stages of crushing to ensure uniform particle size. At this point, any remaining impurities that were not removed during sorting can be further filtered out. After crushing, the cullet is sifted to remove pieces that are either too large or too small. This is done to ensure a uniform mixture of cullet that's ready for melting. From this finely crushed cullet, new bottles and jars are most often produced. It can be a bit unsettling to think that something made from waste ends up as new tableware, right? But the powerful processing and extremely high temperatures used in recycling leave no chance for the glass to carry any trace of its former life into the finished product. After being crushed, the cullet undergoes further cleaning to remove any remaining contaminants and is treated before heading to the melting furnaces, starting with magnetic separation. This process eliminates any leftover metals that may have passed through the sorting phase. It's crucial because even small traces of metal can disrupt the glass melting process. Next, specialized technologies are used to remove any organic residues, such as paper labels, adhesives, or other materials, ensuring that the cullet is completely clean before melting begins. The glass fragments are then sent to vibrating sieve machines, where they pass through screens of various sizes to separate the cullet into different grades based on particle size. Different grain sizes are used for different glass products. At this stage, the entire process is automated with machines equipped with monitoring and control systems. The use of specialized machinery also reduces the risk of injury for workers handling glass bottles, 
as the entire process takes place in a controlled and safe environment. After being cleaned, Cullet is sent to recycling plants, where it is transformed into new molten glass. At the plant, the Cullet is loaded into special furnaces, where it melts at temperatures ranging from 2,800 to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The glass becomes liquid and ready to be shaped into new products. Adding Cullet to the melting process reduces energy consumption, as recycled glass melts at a lower temperature than raw materials. Occasionally, new raw materials such as sand, soda ash, and limestone are added to the melting process to maintain the chemical composition and quality of the glass. This helps ensure the strength and clarity of the new products. Once the glass is transformed into a molten state, it is used to produce new glass items. The liquid glass is poured into molds to create various products such as new glass bottles, jars, vases, or other containers. Lower quality recycled glass is often used as filler in concrete, which enhances its aesthetic appeal, increases strength, and improves thermal insulation. In large factories, this process is fully automated and may involve high precision molds to ensure the desired quality and thickness of the glass. After shaping, the glass products pass through specialized cooling systems where the temperature is gradually reduced. This step is crucial to prevent cracking and ensure the mechanical strength of the finished products. After forming, the new glass products undergo rigorous quality control to ensure they meet safety and durability standards. Optical and mechanical tests are conducted for this purpose. Specialized systems inspect the products for defects, such as air bubbles, cracks, or improper shapes. If a product does not meet the required standards, it is sent back for recycling. Additionally, the items are tested for mechanical strength, especially in the case of glass bottles, which must withstand pressure and other stresses during use. Once all stages are complete, the new glass products are packaged and transported to the market for further use. In large factories, the packaging process is also automated. Glass products are grouped and packed into cardboard boxes or placed on pallets for easy transportation. The finished goods are then shipped to warehouses or directly to customers, such as beverage, food, and other product manufacturers, where they will be used again allowing the glass recycling cycle to start anew. This process is both economically and environmentally beneficial. Glass recycling plays a significant role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and water pollutants. By using recycled glass material to produce jars and containers, we can minimize waste and lower our carbon footprint. Additionally, producing glass from raw materials requires extraction methods that negatively impact the environment making recycling a much more sustainable choice. Glass recycling offers significant environmental benefits due to its energy efficiency. Using recycled glass, Cullet, helps reduce energy consumption in the production of new products, as melting Cullet requires lower temperatures than melting raw materials. Researchers in this field have noted that energy use can be reduced by 3%. Recycling also decreases the amount of waste sent to landfills. Since glass does not naturally decompose and can remain in the environment for thousands of years, recycling it is crucial for environmental preservation. Additionally, glass recycling conserves natural resources. By recycling glass, we reduce the need for raw materials like sand, soda ash, and limestone, helping to preserve these resources for future generations.